And now he's gonna, <laughs> he's gonna give you a smile, real. Look, there oh, it is. He's smiling at you. <laughs> Good girl, Tilt. Tilt. I want this. I want this. Oh, oh, guys. Oh, Bailey boy. Hey guys, so we got six fizzlers here today, and uh, I'm gonna point them out to you with their names. So we got Frankie here. Frankie's uh, one of the originals. You'll know him by how crazy he is. He's a nutbag. He's always jumping up in front of me and saying, "What are we doing? Let's go." Then you got Sparty here. Oh, Sparty boy. Yeah, good boy, mate. Uh, then we got Rodney. Rodney is also a sibling of Hugo, and this is Hugo over here. Um, then you got Stella. Yeah, hello, darling. Hi, how are you? And, uh, and they, are, they may look similar, however, we can all tell them apart very easily. It may not be easy to see on the video, but their personalities are all different. Uh, their, their coordination is a little bit different as well. You've got different mentalities and uh, attitudes. So, uh, you know, it's, it's easy for us, but I thought I'd just point them out to you guys, uh, which one's which. And I suppose the, the most difficult one for you guys to probably figure out is the difference between Rodney and Hugo because they are twins, they, they do look very similar. Rodney's slightly smaller, Hugo's a little bit larger, Rodney's more outgoing, this is Rodney here, and then you've got Hugo standing behind Jason over there, uh, and the difference in their collars is Hugo's got a bit of a, uh, a light check through his collar, but otherwise oh, they're hello, both great. We got the siblings here. We got Hugo, uh, who is over here. This is Hugo. Hello, mate. <laughs> Hugo's a little quieter of the three. Then you got Rodney. He's the outgoing one. He's the one that's all over everything. Doesn't want to stop. Doesn't want to slow down. Hello, mate. Hi, Rodney. Uh, and then you got Hera, the sister. Hello, darling. Hi, Hera. Hello. Hi. 
Uh, so they're all siblings. They are um, obviously as similar looking as you can get across the breeds because they are all little pups, but they are all very different. So um, here, here is you working on a confidence. She is. She's, she's here uh, at the end of a two week stay, which she's doing really well, aren't you darling? Ooh, good girl, good girl. Uh, and then you got Rodney. Hey, hello mate. Yeah, hi buddy. Uh, and then you go behind us. Hello, mate. Good boy, here you go. Good boy. So that was all of them, wasn't it? Did I cover all six? Stella. Stella. Hello, darling. Hi, Stella. Stella's uh, one of the newer ones to join us. She's been here for about, oh, coming up for two months now, maybe. Hello, darling. Hello, darling. Good boy. Good boy, Good boy, mate. Oh, oh. Go, quiet. Hello, Frankie. What you got, Beanie? <laughs> So we had a couple of nesting plovers, which are a, a native Australian bird here uh, on the farm, and they nest every year. There's actually a couple of mating pairs that are on the property. This year they decided to nest inside the playground, and uh, they've obviously hatched over the weekend. So we usually stay away from the top end, which is where their nest was with the eggs on the ground. They, uh, they lay their nest on the ground in the grass, um, and they've obviously hatched, and now I can see the little chicks going across the fence. So. Mum and dad are a little bit um, vocal trying to keep the dogs away. So we'll head up the other end, get the dogs out of their way, let them stress, uh, stress levels die down a bit. And we'll come in once the dogs are out and uh, try and catch the chicks and put them outside the fence so they can relax and the dogs won't hurt them. So uh, yeah, let's try and uh, keep this safe. If it's not plovers or ducks or turtles, <laughs> there's always something going on. Righto guys, come on, let's go this way. So up the end of the paddock here you can see a white bucket standing up there and we put the bucket there to mark the location of the plover's nest for the mower to make sure the mower didn't run over it and, uh, and to give it some space. Uh, we also put the bucket over the top of the nest when we got the place sprayed so there was no um, chemical spray contaminating the, the nest of the eggs. Um, so we'll go up and have a look now, see if all the eggs are hatched. Uh, they most likely would have because the parents have left the nest, but uh, let's go check it out. Ready, Billy? Go check out the nest, mate. Eh? So this is all the nest is, just some flattened down grass, all, all the four eggs are just usually laying right there like that. So the, the, the eggs were all there on Friday and now come Monday morning they're all gone and the birds are right down the other end of the paddock. Uh, they won't be able to get out of this paddock because it's fully fenced with the snake mesh so we'll have to, uh, we'll have to catch them and put them out so that uh, the dogs don't get it. So who's more likely to maybe go after these plovers, do you think, in our pack today? We've yeah, got a lot of bird we've, dogs. We've got a couple of bird dogs, but uh, the actual chicks themselves, uh, so their defence, the mum lets out a call and the, the chick's defence is just to go to ground and hide amongst the grass. So they don't run, they don't flee, they can't fly. Um, so they're relatively, relatively safe from today's pack. But the main birds, if they're flight birds, it's going to be Sparty. He'll go after the mum and dad all day long. They come in and swoop. He, he's a good uh, bird chaser. Whenever it's the ducks, the ducks come in and pretend that they're injured to lure you away from the chicks. Um, and Sparty will go after the mum all day long. Uh, 
He'll run up and down. Not this unassuming Vizsla. <laughs> yeah. Look at him. Yeah, that's this guy. No. Starting. That's buddy. Uh, but then the ones that you got to look out for for these particular birds, uh, the ones that are hiding out are the, are the nose dogs. So there's none here today that will really be much of a threat, but... There Chilly will the be. beagle ear you've got, but yeah, but she's not a she's not a she'll she'll sniff them out, but she won't know what to do with them. She'll just see yeah. them and then run off. She she won't hurt them or harm them. Um, you've got a couple of other little dogs like the little terriers. They're the ones you got to watch out for. Uh, Frankie the Westie on Wednesday. We've got to get them out here before Wednesday because um, she'll clean them up. Uh, she she's definitely a ground hunter. Uh, and then you've got you know all the dashies, you know. Uh, we got all our terriers tomorrow. Yeah, all the terriers as well. Yeah. But the terriers, again, they'll find them, but I don't think they're going to grab them or do anything. Um, Maybe you know, Ruri. They, they, oh, yeah, Ruri will. Yeah. <laughs> no, Ruri definitely will. Yeah. Uh, but I thought you were talking about, um, like, Sid. Sid. Sid's found them before, no, and yeah, he just no. sniffs them, doesn't know what to yeah, do with them. Yeah, no. Um, but, yeah, we'll get them out today, though. Make sure that they, uh, they survive. One of the reasons why they nest in here, they like nesting on our paddocks, is because we keep our paddocks manicured, nice and clean, nice and neat, weed free. If you look over there, it's a little bit more rough, it's a little bit harder for the, uh, the birds to travel along the, the terrain. Um, the other thing is, in here, aside from our dogs, uh, there's no natural predators, uh, ground predators in here. The only predators they've got to look out for in here are going to be from the sky. No so, snakes. Yeah, no snakes, no foxes, uh, no cats, no no wild dogs, um, which will all be natural predators for uh, Especially chicks. out there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then so the only thing that they've got to look out for here you know, the eagles and the hawks and falcons and uh, that kind of thing. But mum and dad are pretty good parents, these guys. They're pretty formidable. They chase off wedge-tail eagles. They chase off all birds of prey. They'll chase off crows, kookaburras, uh, everything. They're, they're really um, formidable parents when they when they got chicks around. Um, the hardest part for us is going to be getting in there to get the chicks because the parents will go for us all day long. They've got a little barb under their wing and uh, they do spike you with it. Um, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, it's pretty painful. Uh, I'm not sure exactly, but some, some people say that it's a bit of a poisonous barb, but I just know that it's not very fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, they're really, they're really aggressive parents when it comes to their chicks, so they're, they're good, they're good parents. They usually, all, all the chicks that have um, hatched out in the, in the big paddock, they always last till adulthood. Um, you know, unless it's uh, freak weather and they're too young, you get a cold snap, that can often, um, you know, make it a bit more difficult. But they are quite good parents, these guys. The technique for grabbing the chicks or the plovers, um, just to save us from the parents swooping in and spiking us with that barb, is uh, holding a, like a branch or a stick up in the air. They usually always go for the highest point. They swoop down to the highest point. Um, so yeah, we usually have to try and catch them one hand, holding a little branch up while we're trying to grab the chicks. Otherwise, uh, they'll smash us, parents. They get us good. But we'll see, we'll see how we go. We've got a big pelican up there. Yeah, I saw a pelican up there, yeah. Every time I put my socks on after the pool, he always sits there. Does he? Rubs on my feet while yeah. I'm sitting on the... Velcro doggies. Up. Hello, guys. Oh. Hello, guys. <laughs> got those uh, chicks and hats in there. They're down by the front door. Get them out. Don't know.
How many you got? Three. There should be another one. Seen three the whole time I've been. Yeah, just over the other side of the fence where they just landed over there is fine. Just go through that gate and put them in the easement on, still on our property, but in that little easement there. During the lure run, something caught my eye. Out of the corner of my eye, I could see uh, the flailing hands of Adam <laughs> running around, trying to catch those chicks. Uh, he decided to go against the uh, branch method and went for a rag and uh, I caught the tail end of it, but um, gee, it was funny. Him and Dylan in there. <laughs> Flapping their arms above their head, trying to stop these birds from swooping them. Uh, what a crack up.